wanted to be a superhero, maybe even an anime character, specifically this anime character, well, I have just the thing for you. Introducing the Godspeed Test Facility, or GST for short. A game where you can do this and only this. And all you need is a computer, excluding Mac and Linux, a keyboard, and a mouse. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made all these effects, movements, and behaviors, excluding sound effects, so you don't have to suffer like I did. Just a warning, if you don't understand what the sound code does, then you'll be lost in two minutes. By the way, I'll be using C Sharp as my programming language of choice. I don't know if this is important or not, but the killer model I'm using is the same one from Jump Force. The model was from this lovely person on DeviantArt. Click below. Now, very quickly, you need to download the plugin in Blender that lets you import XPS files. I use this one. Then you have to flip all the textures using this toggle in the Materials tab because the model looks like it was pulled inside out and then hit by a car. From there, make some shabby animations so that when you import it into Unity, it isn't just a nice looking statue. Now, this is the part where the code illiterate will get confused. Transform that translate controls regular movement and the camera's position controls the movement direction. Ignore this section. But I can't take credit for this, uh, I got the code from this guy, Sebastian Love, from his third person character controller tutorial. Now, the dash itself uses rigid body forces. Specifically, it directly changes the velocity so that the movement doesn't feel like a disgusting mess. Usually, if you stop moving, it looks like the player is skating on ice, but I removed that. And instead, I cancelled any velocity that wasn't in the up and down axis, resulting in this. There is a little slide, but that's because it'll only trigger after slowing down to a certain speed. You can also immediately stop by turning back to normal. Next, if you press space, then the player will teleport forward depending on how long they held the spacebar for. But apparently, this wasn't simple enough for my beta testers, so I added the simple slider to indicate how far they will teleport. Not much I can say about this one, except that this was a transformation for a while. And if you press left shift, then you can trigger it. Eventually, I made an animation for this, and then I made some effects, but I'll get to them later. In short, I trashed my old camera within script and switched to the Cinemachine Free Look camera. Here's my settings. Now finally, I think the effects are what everyone wants to know, so I saved it for last. These effects can be broken down into material changes, particle effects, camera effects, and aura. So to create this color change, I made a shader using Unity's shader graph. To create the glow around the edges, I used the Fresnel effect, multiplied with an HDR color node, and then inputted it into the mission node of the PBR master to get the glow-like effect. Now if you think that Killua's skin becomes lighter after he transforms, then you'll be right. I add the base texture of the same color I used for the Fresnel effect. Of course, I have to dial it down a bit, or else the color will overpower the image. I don't think that this step is particularly necessary. I mean, Jump Force didn't do it, so I don't think it matters. On a different note, I also use these shaders for the character's base materials. And all I need to do is set these two values to zero in script, and to re-enable them, all I need to do is the opposite. I have two different particle effects, one where the character transforms, and another where he runs. For the transformation, I used a visual effect graph. I feel too lazy to explain this one, so here's a slow pan of what I did. The random node is the important piece, as it's what makes little jagged lightning lines. You can probably guess that this is triggered in script using this event node. Now for the running, I used the regular shuriken particle system. Again, I feel too lazy to explain this one, so here's another slow pan of what I did. The camera effects are pretty basic, all I did was add a camera shake whenever the player transforms. Alright, the reason I used Cinemachine instead of my original camera script was that Cinemachine had a built-in camera shape component, and I didn't want to make it from scratch. All these other settings are pretty handy too, I guess. I'm too lazy to explain this one too, so here's another pan. And all I did was put this on a sphere, and boom! Or, I guess there is another effect, and it's these little electric sparks. I took this effect from Grabiel Aguilar Prod, link below, but I did the flickering. I just turn the component itself on or off depending on this random value. If the value returns 1, then it turns on, and then immediately turns off because the next frame will probably return a different number. And that's it for effects. Now with all of that out of the way, here's a montage of my suffering frustration.
Like I said in the beginning, you can play and try GST out. I'll have a link in the description to my H.io page. And if you want to see more videos like this, then you have to wait, I mean, subscribe, since this is my first video as I'm recording this after all. And from all of this, hopefully I've proved to you that this isn't a virus.